Hello everyone. One of the fun things about uh, having an experimental airplane that you didn't build yourself is that you get to discover all the little quirks and the little things that the person who actually built it did wrong. And I've been dealing with um, a failure for the last couple weeks. Um, a couple weeks back I had to fly from Tucson to uh, Ryan, just a real quick little trip. And when I took off, uh, my gear up indicator uh, didn't tell me that my gear was up, which that happens from time to time. It's a simple little a little switch, uh, three switch system that just um, tells me when the three gear doors are up and closed, but um, uh, one of them I got adjusted uh, a little wrong, and so every once in a while it gets knocked out of adjustment and uh, doesn't tell me that, so not a big deal. But as I was flying, I also noticed that uh, my airspeed was about six knots slower than what I was expecting for the given power settings. So I came back to Tucson and um, same thing, gear door down, um, uh, light, or gear door down and I was flying a little slower. Uh, fortunately I had a camera on the wing uh, and it was turned just enough that I could barely see the nose gear and the nose gear door. And so I looked at the video and saw that the nose gear door stayed wide open, it didn't move at all. And I thought that was rather odd and I looked a little closer and could see that my nose gear did not tuck all the way back up into the well. Uh, it had only gone back about 45 degrees. So I uh, put the plane up on jacks in the hangar and um, swung the gear and as the, normally the, the main gear starts to go up first and then the nose gear will start to retract and as the nose gear started to retract this god-awful crunching sound um, happened. So I popped the uh, circuit breaker, stopped it, and um, went and looked uh, what was going on and looked up into the wheel well and I could see that the uh, upper mount for the hydraulic strut that um, uh, retracts the gear had ripped out of the top of the well. Um, the Lancer's uh, landing gear is uh, operated by um, a hydraulic pump and it's held up by hydraulics. Uh, but it is a fail-safe system, so if the hydraulics fail, uh, they naturally want to come down and they'll lock into position. So it's never really a safety issue. Um, so I had to uh, drain all the gas out of the header tank, because to get to the top of that mount, you got to get underneath the header tank, lift it up the um, canopy in the header tank, and uh, lo and behold, I saw that the entire top had um, uh, ripped out. So great. Um, wasn't sure exactly why, uh, but you know, it's fortunately it's fiberglass and it's easy to fix. So I t took apart the uh, or took the hydraulic cylinder out and reglassed it and got it all secure and everything. And then when I put the cylinder back in, um, what I noticed is well, I had gone through and read, read the build manual and, and the big thing that it talked about was that you have to make sure that the stops, the open and close stops on the hydraulic cylinder are set properly because the um, uh, fiberglass can't handle a lot of stress. And when the uh, cylinder closes, there's upwards of 1800 PSI on that cylinder holding it closed since that's the only thing that's holding up the nose gear. And then when it opens, it, it opens up to about 700 PSI. And so, uh, before I put the cylinder back in, I closed the um, uh, closed the, the cylinder all the way um, and to see how much of a space was. Then I put a bunch of washers in there. Um, so I uh, knew exactly where closed position was. And as you'll see in this picture, uh, when I put it back up in there and I pushed the gear up into there, into the wheel well to the entirely closed position, there's still a gap, about a quarter of an inch of a gap. So what that means is the the builder never properly adjusted the, the gear, so when the gear went up, uh, it was still trying, it had a little bit of space, it was still trying to pull the gear up even farther, but it couldn't go up any farther, so the only thing it could do is pull down on the fiberglass at the top. And the same thing when it was open, uh, it wasn't, the stop wasn't set right, so when it opened up and went to the full open position, it was pushing on the top a little bit. And if any of you have ever taken a piece of metal and just bent it, bent it, bent it, bent it, bent it, bent it, eventually it just snaps in, in half. Well, fiberglass does the same thing. So over a couple hundred cycles 
uh, this thing uh, just slowly, just a little tiny bit, would pull and push and pull and push and pull and push and pull and push until it finally uh, broke out. So I uh, got it um, all reglassed, got everything secured, got it properly uh, adjusted for the stops, and um, you know, and, and we're good to go. Um, haven't had a chance to fly it yet. I plan on doing that uh, tomorrow on the twelfth um, because I've just been super busy and haven't had a chance to to get down there and finish getting the uh, the cowling and everything put back on. But um, it's always something. And for those of you who are curious, the um, the Lancer, a lot of most landing gears, not all, but most landing gears use a um, uh, it's called an over center link, and it's basically like a knee or an elbow. Uh, it will bend one direction, and then when it opens up, it goes just past horizontal slightly so it's trying to bend the wrong way but it physically can't bend any farther so it's over center it's held in place by a hydraulic ram or a spring or something that's helping pull it in that direction so uh, uh, you know once the gear is down and locked it can't um, uh, bend the wrong way and uh, that's what makes it fail safe as it goes down um, it uh, uh, opens up and uh, locks in position and we're good. So even if this thing had completely ripped out of the uh, uh, the well, it wouldn't have been a big deal. The, the thing just would have dropped completely and done. But anyway, um, like I said, always something. It's fun. So have a good one, and I'll post another flight video soon. Take care.